Let's check back with the NASA live feed. We're going to see how far we are out from the launch. And hey, now let's check. And we'll check back in with Norm. Norm, what's okay. latest from the site? Hey, uh, it's getting pretty uh, intense here. I'm actually having to defend the space now. People are coming <laughs> around. Us. Hey, we have a camera, so a bunch of people are coming out on the lawn here. We're on the press site uh, activity. So that shot you saw earlier of the uh, vertical launch assembly building is now starting to fill up with people. Um, so it's just super exciting. Uh, the clock is ticking, but you know, Alexa, this is not my first time at Kennedy Space Center. I think you recall the trip you and I took a couple of years ago here, right? Yeah, I do remember. It was during COVID times. That's correct. We did for our virtual Discover event, we did a, uh, a show here from Kennedy Space Center talking about our space bone program. And during that uh, remote uh, demonstration, if you will, I had a chance to speak with the uh, distinguished Mr. Rick Mastracchio, an absolutely uh, you know, wonderful guy, uh, a pioneer in space, a retired NASA astronaut that's currently the vice president of business development for Northrop Grumman, again, our partner on this mission. So why don't we go ahead and take a quick look uh, at that uh, at that conversation. So team, go ahead and roll the tape. So to kick things off, we're really excited to have our good friend, Rick Mastracchio join us, uh, Director of Business Development from Northrop Grumman. Rick, welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Norm. Yeah, thanks for making the trip. It's great to be here. Yeah, now Rick, uh, obviously by your jacket, you are a real astronaut, an experienced astronaut with many, many space flights behind you. I'm a former NASA astronaut now working for Northrop Grumman, that's right. Yeah. So we happen to be standing in front of one of your old trusty steeds, yeah. the Atlantis Space Shuttle, uh, the real shuttle here, and you flew on uh, at the mission 106, I believe. Yes, my first space shuttle mission was STS-106 in 2000, one of the very early assembly missions of the International Space Station. We were actually arrived before the first crew moved in, and part of our job was to get the space station ready, install the toilets, get the crew quarters ready, have all the science experiments ready for when the first crew moved in a month later in, in fall of 2000. And People have been living on board International Space Station ever since. Yeah, and I think it's 20 years. More than 20, 20 years. 20 years yeah. in November. Yeah. So I think you were, I mean, you could say you were the last gap there we between, were one of, yeah. you know, you locked the doors uh, and then, you know, the next crew opened it up and we've been there ever since. Yeah, so I was fortunate in that I got to visit the International Space Station before anybody lived there. Mm -hmm. I went back a few years later and three folks were living there. I went back a few years later and six folks were living there. And then I went back a few years later and I was living there. Yeah. So I got yeah. to see the whole progression of things. Yeah, and that's pretty unique. Yeah. Uh, again, three yeah. shuttle missions. Three I think shuttle missions really plus a Soyuz uh, mission. A Soyuz um, mission. Yeah. So you rode the Russian delivery system uh, yes. up there. A nice little vehicle. Very yeah, nice. re yeah. yeah, was that uh, quite a bit different than Quite a bit different. Shuttle? And where a Soyuz vehicle is is a, a very small compared to the, the space shuttle, which is, uh, you know, obviously a, a, an incredible vehicle. Yeah. Now, uh,